Hello and welcome to another Total Education Lecture. Today I'm going to talk to you about Kenneth Slessor's Country Towns. It's a, it's a good poem to start with Slessor because it shows some of the ambivalence and dichotomy in his poetry, but it also shows and gives a little bit of an example of, of some of his work that shows how he's in, um, allured by the city rather than the country. Don't forget, after if you like this, there's the like button down below, and don't forget to visit our website at totaleducationcentre.com.au. I particularly like country towns um, because it starts off with that, that lovely feeling, that lovely slow feeling, country towns with your willows and squares and farmers bouncing on barrel mares, to public houses of yellow wood with 1860 over their doors. And immediately Slessor starts it off with that feeling and it sticks with those themes that I talked about in previously in the lectures that I'd like you to um, just remember and go over here. If you think back to the very first introductory les lecture to Slessor in these videos, we had Vivian Smith talking about his themes. And I'd like to reiterate those themes before we start Country Towns and we move into studies of the other poems such as Wild Grapes and William Street. Vivian Smith in the um, Oxford History of Australian Literature said that Slessor's poetry um, his thematic preoccupations were time, memory and history and they're very evident in this poem. As he's using the landscape symbolically so that they convey a state of mind and we'll see here that he conveys that certain sleepiness of the country town very well. The sardonic humour, questioning and puncturing illusions. He talks about the city. She also says he incorporates the European cultural heritage and we can see that in his poem pleading with the School of Arts. In language with his sense of concrete in the particular and we see the very concrete images in this poem and a sound as a way of creating meaning and the ambivalences and i think country towns captures all those themes that she talks about in that po those that poetry very very clearly and i like the way that Slessor does that with this poem Slessor has said of country towns that it's um it needs no elucidation he wrote that in his in his notes about this poem it is a very, very straightforward poem, and one that you'll find quite easy to understand. It's probably his simplest poem, yet it conveys all his ideas, as I said there. And if you look at that Vivian Smith entry in the Oxford Dictionary of Australian Literature, you'll find a very complete analysis of all those ideas. This is probably a sort of amalgam or composite of, of all the country towns that Slessor had in his youth and visited. And it gives us that sense of escapism um, in many ways through the poems and how it, it's, it's more like a pastoral poem in many ways with some inherent criticisms of the bush. And Slessor himself said about country towns that he wanted to move away from the bush ballad and move to a more sophisticated overview. So what is Country Towns about? And we'll do a quick plot overview and we'll have a, have a little bit of a look at the poem before we move into some more in-depth analysis, I suppose you'd say. So what is Country Towns about? The first thing is probably about the timelessness of the country towns, and that's reflected in stanza one, and I read part of that for you at the beginning of the lecture. The, the kindliness of country people is in stanza two. I think that the peacefulness or tranquility many people have said about the place, that's reflected very clearly in stanza three. The, the last stanza talks about the country town and how it's embraced by timelessness and it's more like a sort of prayer in many ways to the country town and it's reasonably positive after the criticisms of the second stanza. I think that's basically what the poem's about but in more detail Slessor seems to describe the, the memories and activities that, that he had from those country towns in early on. And it's while it's a picture of a generalised rural life in many ways, it's also about um, life in Australia at that particular moment of time and, and that romantic idea of the bush ballad that, that many poets captured the Lawsons and the Pattersons and all those sorts of things. And Slessor wanted to move away from that and become a little bit more sophisticated. So we do see in this poem there's some criticism and, you know, the School of Arts, a broadsheet lies, and there's a general sense of sarcasm in, in those two lines, and we do see the word sprayed with the sarcasm of flies. So there's a little bit of that ambivalence about, yes, we like the country town, but no, there's flaws in that country town as well. 
and instead of celebrating it in many ways, Slessor sort of looks at it in a more sophisticated urban way. I think that Slessor creates in this the images and the, and the, the techniques that he uses creates, helps create that romantic vision. And the, the general feeling of that is that we do value the country town, but there are problems with it. And again, in this, Slessor uses those sensual images and, and uses the senses very clearly. You get the sight, the sound, the taste, the touch, the smell of it in many ways. And I think colour is important in this one, that sight, the yellow wood, that, the yellow word signifying age and all those things that go along with that, musty, mulberry, gold. And it's, it's very that warm summer days and, and the idea of that, the summertime warmth and, and everything's very languid and slow and we see that with the dozing dogs later on. Slessor also draws on, on the language of sleep in many ways and musky sleep, dozing deep and drowse again to maintain that somnambulant tone of the poem. And I think that the colours, the, the, the mulberry again comes back into it, that idea of being sunburnt because you've been sleeping out in the sun so long. And the idea of the other central images, dogs that lick, um, charge with ale, and we get a very, very clear picture and a visual image of the place. And I think Slessor is developing here the, the style of imagery that later on he perfects. Slessor also draws, as I said, on sound to talk about this one, the lazy relaxed, the dogs, they lower their ears because they hear a sound but it's not really that close because nothing ever happens in a country town. And it's a star of sound and soon they go back to their snoring again. The town itself is in a state of suspended animation and we see that in that, that rather longer image of the School of Arts, the broadsheet lies. And I'll just read you that very quickly so we can get a real full sense of that. At the School of Arts a broadsheet lies, sprayed with the sarcasm of flies, the great go lightly family of entertainers here tonight. Dated a year and a half ago, but left there less from carelessness than from a wish to seem polite. Okay, so as well as sarcasm, there's, of course there's the irony there of the, the dates. And I think that's very important that Slessor notes that the country town has a school of arts, but there's really not much culture, and the only culture they've had is a visit from the Go Lightly family, which doesn't seem very cultural at all. And even that was a year and a half ago, and even the flies have blown it. And that, that sense of irony is quite, quite interesting in the poem. Um, the general drowsiness continues into the next stanza and we move along. And I think the audience, as Slessor builds on that poem, is then carefully drawn into um, a more positive portrayal of the country towns by that carefully crafted imagery and the moods. I think in the third stanza he goes back to the verandas baked with must be sleep and and it's just very gentle and slow and there's not much going on. And I think he feels that he's developed through that a very um, picturesque view of a country town. So what are some of the stylistic points of the poem? I've already mentioned a few of the techniques. The, the tone, for example, varies between the sleepiness and, and in the more active parts of the poem, it's where the criticism comes in. And here we see the persona is, is really just the voice of the poet and he, he makes in certain points a caricature of country living but it's a very sensitive caricature, it's not cruel or bitter in any way, shape or form. Um, this poem is a very early Slessor poem so I think it shows us also those building blocks of, of what happens later on as I've suggested to you previously. And Slessor's view of um, the country town helps in his poetic development, he's building his ideas, he's building his views and later on when we look at um, poems like William Street we see where he's moved into that full urban sense. This poem also develops his use of humour and sarcasm which comes out in, in some of the later poems and we move from literal images in this poem, um, the public houses of yellow wood to the more figurative images like drown in syrups and we've got that sorry, drown me with syrups, and we've got that gentle move from the literal to the figurative and back again, and that's very, very well developed in Celeste's later poems. You see that in places like um, Five Bells, Visions, Captain Dobbin, those sorts of poems. And 
the, the ambiguity in this, the, the clash between the town and the country is very, very important. And that also comes out later in those poems. And I think this is a good poem to begin an essay with and to talk about and a good way to introduce yourself to Slessa because it does have those different, different elements in it. So what else can we do? I think by the end of it, we see that Slessa really does appreciate life in a country town. What are some other stylistic points we can talk about? The regular stanzas, okay? They have that, that very specific arrangement. I've talked about the ambiguity before. I've talked about the positives and the negatives and how he binds those two elements together. And I think that's those stylistic elements and they're very close. As I said previously, it is a very simple poem. And I'd like to read you very quickly what one poet, one, one critic, um, Berg, actually thinks of it. She says, By the end of the poem, the poet seems to have won over to, an appreciating, to appreciating the value of life in a country town. The tone of the poem actually changes at the beginning of the third stanza as the sheer sleepiness of the place becomes dominant and the other details the po poet has chosen to pick on become irrelevant. By the final stanza, it has lost its cynicism and seems instead to express a longing for the lifestyle that he set out to ridicule. And I think that that sense of, of timelessness comes through later in, in, in the poetry of Slessor and, and that's the major theme that you need to draw out of this one, that sense of that time <coughs> develops very carefully through the poem and that Sless is not criticising time, but he does see its onward and inexorable movement. And I think that's the key theme that you can link all of Sless's poems together with. So what else can we see here? We like the images, the long sounding words that, that develop and push that sense of somnambulance through the poem. We also have in this last stanza, let's have a look at it. Country towns with your schooner bees and locusts burnt in the pepper trees Drown me with syrups, arch your boughs. Find me a bench and let me snore till charged with ale and unconcern. I'll think it's noon at half past four. And I think those last few lines are very catchy and they, they certainly have attracted much critical attention over the years. And Slessa here, I think, that's a very, very positive end to the poem and very different from that second stanza that I read to you. And there's nothing wrong with thinking it's noon at half past four because we're unconcerned, life's moved on, the sleepiness is there, and it's all very, very interesting to the person who lives in that country town with their mulberry faces bolting deep. It's a nearly a romantic vision of unhurried pace of country life. And in some ways, there's nearly an implied criticism of the city in many ways, that it is too bustling, too moving and fast, and maybe we need to find a little bit more balance in our lives. I think that we have a very, very um, important poem here in Celeste's development and one that you could pay attention to in that very way. You can use different models to analyse the poetry and I'd just like to finish up here by talking about one particular model that, that's relevant and you could try it out in this poem because it is a very literal and simple poem. There's, there's a model that's called the Specs model, S-P-E-C-S, and what that does, it talks about subject, purpose, emotion, craft, and summary. And I'll put some notes at the back of the lecture to, to develop that. But if you're ever looking at a poem and, and you can't understand it or you're very worried about it, and you can use that specs model, and that's again, that subject, purpose, emotion, craft, and summary. And you can work your way through those ideas and just see what those things do for you, and then that will help you work your way into the poem. So that's really all we're going to talk about today about Celeste's Country Towns. I hope you've enjoyed this lecture. Don't forget, you can press the like button down below. If you have any questions um, or comments, please leave them. And don't forget to visit totaleducationcentre.com.au for all your educational needs. I'm Bruce Pattinson. Goodbye and best luck with your studies.